I would advise yeah, everybody who likes nature to buy a microscope because you can go on a safari in your own home. Looking through the microscope and seeing such a great diversity of shapes and kinds of behavior. For the last 400 years, people with access to a microscope, so mostly scientists, have been able to watch the micro world in action. The rest of us had to wait. The first micro motion picture was taken in 1927. You might say this kicked off a whole new genre of film. Here's film curator Heather Heckman. It's almost like watching avant-garde cinema. They're just very beautiful. Heckman is talking specifically about photographer Roman Vishniak's work. Vishniak died in 1990, and you may know him for his more macro subjects. He took this portrait of Einstein and is famous for documenting Jewish communities in Eastern Europe before the Holocaust. But he was also a science buff. Science and nature have given me the most interesting hours of my life. That's from one of the many educational films Vishniak made in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. They were shown in classrooms, and they often featured his micro-movies. He was a pioneer of cinemicroscopy, as he called it. He was really an avid experimenter. He loved to design his own lenses. There's sort of a rich tradition of professional and amateur experimentation in microscopy and, and photomicroscopy in the U.S. And Vishniak kind of sits, he kind of straddles that, that divide. That tradition has continued around the world and greatly benefited from changes in technology. Take this comparison. Here's Vishniak's film, released in 1959, of a hydra. That's a freshwater organism, and it's a predator in its community. Look at today's version of the same subject. This is the work of Dutch photographer Wim van Egmond. And you can see, the video is so sharp that you can make out the single-celled ciliates zipping around on the hydra surface. The new uh, digital cameras are so good, the resolution is about the, the resolution that you get from a microscope. Plus, you don't need to develop the film anymore. Nowadays, with uh, digital photography, you have immediately a result, and then you can correct immediately. And um, in the past, you need a lot of light to get um, the film illuminated well. Van Eckman has been doing this for about 20 years. That's when he purchased his first microscope, a used Zeiss. And that's what he uses today, secondhand scopes from the 60s and 70s. This is where I put the camera on this tube, but it's also possible to photograph through this. But it's nice that you can look through this and uh, photograph through this. The organisms range in size from about a millimeter to a 20th of a millimeter, and the images aren't color corrected or edited. So this is how these organisms really look. And you can see them represented, perhaps more clearly than ever before in history. The key for a good image is how you prepare the sample that you put under the microscope. The depth of field of the optics of the magnification is so so thin, eh? so uh, you have to flatten the organism with a cover slip because otherwise it will swim out of focus all the time. Photography and video is also about finding the decisive moment, says Van Egmond. We're talking about the drama of the micro world. Did that rotifer just expel something? <laughs> yeah. It's a um, micro dropping. Well, I'm not sure if you call it a dropping because it goes up. Vishniak too found drama in the lives of these organisms. Here, between this blepharisma, a very exciting thing called conjugation takes place. And in the course of making art, Vishniak and Van Eggman became experts in this microscopic world. These are tunicate eggs. They're dinoflagellates from the sea. The green blobs is, of course, the key feature of the cyanobacteria. The giant water flea has such a big eye because it has to find its uh, prey, which is other water fleas. 
And if you're thinking these organisms look too weird to be true. The micro world has different uh, laws. When you're so small, normal arms uh, don't help to swim. So you need little hairs instead of arms. Or you know, So everything looks different because this world also has different physics. <laughs> huh? Plus we're not used to seeing that world. Our visual capacities are so limited that we miss uh, the good bits and the, the, the interesting bits. We can learn so much more looking around if we use a little inexpensive magnifying lens. It is so important to be interested. I'm a curious person and I like to see new things every day. And uh, yeah, the microscope helps. To look closer, we'll see more, we'll be wiser, and the world will be bigger. It's a compelling idea. The world gets bigger when we turn our attention to things that are small. For Science Friday, I'm Flora Lichtman.